Well, welcome to the Celebs.com studio at Sundance, sponsored by movie maker Marina Abramowicz and Matthew Akers. Um, tell me about the first time you guys met. It was uh, upstate at her star house, what she calls her star house, and um, I was immediately seduced. She's, uh, <laughs> are you embarrassed by that? No, 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 no. I just was so happy that he actually said the name exactly correct. It's the first time it happened today. That's true. <laughs> Um, she was actually about to do uh, she was a training. She was training these um, 36 at the time. There are more now, but 36 re performers who were going to be performing five of her historical works at the Museum of Modern Art. And uh, they, ha they couldn't speak or eat for three days and um, had to do everything she asked. Telephone and um, watches like yours were taken away. Yeah. That's for why. How did it feel? Is that the first time you've had other people perform your work? Actually, yes. Uh, to me, it was very interesting, generally, since long time, what to do uh, for the legacy of a performance work. Because, you know, in, uh, in the 70s, uh, the performance artists would not be protected by any kind of law. So, television, MTV, uh, fashion, design, everybody rip us off and they never actually write the, you know, where the original work comes from. So if you take part of the book text or you, you take the, I don't know, the, the piece of music, you, we have to pay the rights, but not for the performance. So I was really thinking it's very important that uh, we change that and see if performance can be re-performed and give her new life. And this is one of the, my ideas. P at what point in time did, did Matthew come to you or did you extend an olive branch to try and find someone to capture the whole process leading up to this moment retrospective? No, everything went much more spontaneous. Much you have a story how that happened. So uh, my producer, Jeff Dupre, who uh, I collaborated with for a number of years, met her at a party actually, and um, was sitting between Marina and Klaus Biesenbach, the curator of the show, and they were talking about the show over him. And uh, of course his interest was piqued, and I think he talked Marina into allowing him to document this performance and this thing she had coming up, but um, she at first said that she wanted David Lynch to direct the film, is that right? No, but actually what happened, it was have a little slightly different version, but what happened that I was asking Jeff what he was doing, and then he was telling me, working with Matthew, and they just came from this enormous documentary of four, I don't know, six months on the... Six, on the six hours of the circus, and then, and then the, prior the, to that we had lived six months on an aircraft carrier, and I think she thought that was hardcore. An interview about 4,000 soldiers, I said, that's my guys. I mean, this is long durational, they're committed, and they're hardcore. It's, it's that fine line between art and activism that you've always balanced um, that probably you saw in Matthew's work as well. You know, I never saw anybody more committed in my entire life like a Matthew Eckers. I mean, he never give up. We're exhausted. We are, we are on the end of energy, and he still is doing another shot, another shot. And he always said this, this, this line, it's just going to be a few seconds, and these few seconds turn to hours and hours and hours. But the result but you had is... fun. Come on. No, sh uh, suffering is my thing. <laughs> but anyway, but then really result was remarkable, remarkable. So you say suffering is your thing. I was at the show at MoMA as well. Is there an enjoyable component to it for you? You have no idea what's happening when you, when, when the, you know, you leave your body and you have out-of-body experience. It's incredible. What you see, okay, is the body sitting there, but there's so many things happening on the, on the kind of um, uh, soul level and consciousness level. And, you know, the, the reaction of people is incredible reward because people just come and, and really kind of get in contact with themselves. It, it was a very difficult but incredible, satisfying performance. There was so much buzz around the MoMA retrospective. So many magazines put you on the cover and had lots of discussions about the show. Um, no, obvious. but wait, 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 before you ask the question. First of all, the obsession of Americans is about nudity. You are completely obsessed. I don't understand at all. I mean, just this stupid thing of the, of the Jenna Jack Jacqueline showing the, the nipple, you know, w during the Iraq war when it was the much more important issues and every press was writing about this. It's ridiculous. So we had uh, two naked people, you know, standing on the, on the, on the door and uh, everybody was talking about this nakedness. If they have erection, they have half erection. Erection, the no erection, you know, nobody think the, the poetry of this piece that actually the, the artists are door of the museum and you go through this door. Everybody was looking to know that. So the main, the huge amount of press was about that, which really was mis 
leading the point of the piece. And but obviously, but wait, Marina. But to, to your credit, I think also that you did with this new performance, the artist is present, create a charismatic space, and I think that had something to do with the sensationalism of the show and people. I mean, they camped but out. Yes, yes, yes. But this only came. You see, the first months because the great thing there was long duration. It was three months. First months, everybody was talking about unity, from the Barbara Walters to everybody. Mm -hmm. Second months, the people start interested. Oh, she's still sitting, and the third month will really kick out. Then, then it's oh well, you were God. clever. You roped them in. <laughs> yeah, but to have an experience. <laughs> three months, and then. Then the main thing was Lady Gaga. She really helped the whole thing. I could not believe. I never met her yet. But she came for the show, and then every single kid from the age of 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 ran to the museum. And they never saw the performance, never even went to the Museum of Contemporary Art. But because of Lady Gaga, they went there, and they look at this thing, and they stay, and they come again and again and become a new public. And that's, I mean, obviously Lady Gaga has incredible attention surrounding everything she does. Um, the amount of attention that came as a result of the show and the blogs and the game and all that other stuff and the, and the movie, how does that feel compared to the success of the 70s and that kind of more, that, that struggle and that fight and getting your work out there? How does this side of the coin feel where, it's, where you've essentially become the most, probably the most famous contemporary performance artist there is? Thanks God that I'm now 65 and came slowly in my life. Because if you're a kid of 25 and you get all the success, then you get an overdose and die. But in my case, it took so long and so long, and it's 40 years of struggle. So I, it doesn't change me, only give me the satisfaction that is worth it. And it's not just about me and my success, it's about general position of performance art, which is change, become mainstream art. And this is the struggle for so many years. So many artists just give up and could not get to that position. So if the pos if the now performance become mainstream art, this that means that my function as, as artist really is fulfilled. And I think the museum really did, Museum of Modern Art really did, and Marina uh, usher in performance into the mainstream with this new performance and with this retrospective. And film. It was, and the film. I mean, this is the first time any U.S. museum is, has done anything like this. And so it was a historic moment. And then the um, performance that Marina did was so great that, you know, it just was like a perfect, but, perfect collision of things. But one thing that the museum didn't expect at all, the amount of visitors. We have yeah. close to 850,000, which for living artists is a record. Now they're already writing that actually museum is dropping the visitors. They've never could, the, 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 the two, the most visited shows, it was Tim Burton, of course, because filmmaker, and, and this show, and nobody expected. Marina, I really think you should have continued the performance for one more month to get the million. <laughs> I think you should have. Yeah, <laughs> that's true, but the museum gave me three months, this was it. <laughs> yeah. And um, a lot of documentaries that we see are about the struggles, are about the hardships, of art, especially of artists. Um, this one's working towards a goal, which is the show. So in that term, uh, for audiences, is it a much more uplifting and rewarding experience? Yeah, you know, I was really skeptical of performance art when I set out to make this film, and you know, it wasn't that I wanted to, um, I didn't want to make a hagiography, and I didn't want to, I uh, also make some sort of um, sensationalist uh, view of Marina or some, I, w I wasn't out to get her or anything like that. I just didn't really understand uh, what performance was about and all that. So going on the journey, you sort of get this really great intimate um, experience with her and you see her life and we introduce some of her work for people that are uninitiated and then you, know, you get to the show. And I think what happened there was so powerful and um, people really had an experience, you know, what, uh, we live in this culture and this society right now where uh, you know everything is sort of we're over mediated we're um, communicating through Facebook and Twitter and all these other things we're not having the human gener genuine human connection with people and so um, you know I didn't expect the film to take such a uh, to take such an uplifting path and, and to be have such an incredible message but I think that the work really did go there and uh, you know it's I think it sets the film apart a little bit from some of the you know, typical cautionary tale, alarm bell ringing documentaries that, you know, seem to come out all the time. And um, I think it's really hard to tell that sort of story. And uh, to my delight, um, that, that's the story we told. Yeah, but you know, what he done to me is not just uh, that, you know, they filmed the, the performance in, in MoMA and a little bit of interviews. It's such a radical, actually, approach because basically it's one year of having the the, the, the microphone all the time in any situation it means completely not having private life, giving the key of my apartment in any possible moment he can come and film. So it's really giving to do this kind of movie, you as an artist you have to give total control away. And uh, 
I really trust him from the beginning and I really love his skepticism. It was like not that I should prove him something else. I just want to that he become witness of the process, preparation, and then final result. And that's what movie is actually about. And, and as a filmmaker, that was a total dream. I mean, to have access like that, I mean, who wouldn't want to make that film? Yeah. So the artist was silent, but hopefully the audience won't be tonight. You'll get to see it with them for the first time. Um, and uh, so congratulations and enjoy the ride. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.